Today I'm here at one of the most beautiful train stations in the entire world, Grand Central Terminal. Even though I've been here hundreds of times, this building never fails to impress. The architecture is simply stunning. Today I'm actually here for two separate reasons. One is to see a brand new part of Grand Central Terminal, and the other is to visit the legendary Grand Central Oyster Bar. I just finished a little mini adventure exploring the new Grand Central Madison, which is an extension of the Long Island Railroad, and I must say, it was incredible. This is just so massive. I mean, it is huge, really nice, brightly lit. Wow, this is so much bigger than I thought it'd be. It basically means passengers can board Long Island Railroad trains here instead of going all the way to Penn Station. It also really makes commutes from JFK Airport to Manhattan so much easier. That was certainly a fun side quest, but it's now time for the main event, the Grand Central Oyster Bar. The restaurant has seemingly been here forever. It is absolutely legendary, and I've been wanting to go there for a long time, but because of the pandemic, it was closed for the majority of it. But today's the day for oysters, so let's check out how this legendary establishment measures up. Located below the main concourse of Grand Central Terminal in the dining hall is the Grand Central Oyster Bar. The establishment has been there since the train station opened back in 1913. It's an absolutely massive restaurant with multiple seating areas. I chose to sit in the main dining room, and while it was practically empty after I arrived when the restaurant opened, it gradually filled up throughout my lunch. Architect Rafael Guastavino designed the dining room with his signature arched and vaulted ceilings adorned with terracotta tiles. To me, the Grand Central Oyster Bar is without a doubt one of the most beautiful restaurants in the city. I just got seated. This dining room is so insanely gorgeous. Just wow. Their menu is fairly large and changes daily according to what is fresh and available at the Fulton Fish Market that morning. While a steak and chicken are offered, seafood is clearly the focus of the restaurant and it isn't exactly cheap. One's certainly paying for the food, but also the ambiance. I just placed my order. Big surprise, I got oysters. With the name Grand Central Oyster Bar, there was no way in hell that I could not get oysters. There were 18 different kinds on offer that day, and to make things easier, I chose two of each of the top three oysters listed on the menu. That way, I could sample one just as it is while I could add the various sauces and toppings to the other. First, I squeezed a bit of lemon over them all and then sampled the Copps Island Blue Point Oyster. It was simply everything that one could want with an oyster. It was so fresh, had tremendous flavors, it was fantastic. Next was the Beau Soleil from New Brunswick. Now, it was good, but it was my least favorite out of the three, mainly because it was just so tiny. Finally, I enjoyed the beaver tail oyster from Rhode Island. This one had a great taste and a really smooth texture. It was a close call between the beaver tail and blue point oysters regarding my favorite, but ultimately I felt as if I enjoyed the blue point the most. Ironically, the blue point oyster was the most affordable option available that day. To finish off some of my remaining oysters, I utilized some of the condiments like the cocktail sauce and Tabasco sauce. All told, oysters are indeed an essential purchase at the restaurant. To me, oysters can serve as a phenomenal snack or a great way to start a meal. After finishing, I was presented with a fresh roll of bread and butter. The bread was all right, but nothing special. It was a little too chewy and dense for my liking. At least the flavor was all right, and I did enjoy later in my lunch dipping the roll into the tasty broth of my oyster pan roast. And speaking of my oyster pan roast, it came quickly out of the kitchen as well. The first time I was made aware of this dish was when I read Adam Platt's memoir, The Book of Eating. Platt served as the critic for New York Magazine for 22 years and nostalgically reminisced and praised the Oyster Bar's pan roast. It's been on the menu since the establishment opened and has remained one of New York City's most enduring dishes. The broth in this pan roast is so good. There's just so much flavor to it. I'm absolutely loving this dish. Basically, it's a stew with the broth consisting of Heinz chili sauce, paprika, half and half, Worcestershire sauce, clam juice, and celery salt. At the heart of the dish are six shucked blue point oysters and a thick slice of toast. I didn't really know what to expect flavor-wise, but my first sip was one of pure bliss. 
The broth was certainly fantastic, but the plump oysters lent a nice brininess to the dish. The toast at the center of the stew became soggier as I ate, but still held up pretty well and contributed a sense of heartiness to the plate. Overall, I could really see how the pan roast has been a staple of the Grand Central Oyster Bar for all these years. Frankly, it's just fantastic! For a side, I got a portion of french fries which I have to admit look pretty basic. The fries are decent. They actually taste better than they look. Texture-wise, the fries had a good crisp and fluffy center, and while they could have used a bit more salt, it wasn't a big deal. They were certainly not bad, and it was nice to have something to munch on between bites of my pan roast. All of that food was really good, but I of course saved room for dessert. The Grand Central Oyster Bar has a moderately sized dessert menu consisting of basic but classic offerings. Being that I was in a classic New York restaurant, I went with the New York Cheesecake. For the most part, it was good, but it wasn't anything special. It really needed a fruit sauce or some other component to make it more interesting, but like I said, it wasn't bad, it just needed something more. But overall, my lunch at the Grand Central Oyster Bar was a great experience that was more than just about the food. The atmosphere, history, and architecture makes the Grand Central Oyster Bar a place like no other. It's a classic New York City institution for sure. I just finished my lunch and I arrived here to the beautiful Bryant Park. First off, those bumper cars on ice look like so much fun. Second, I really enjoyed my lunch at the Grand Central Oyster Bar. My oysters were great and that pan roast is a really interesting but flavorful dish. I really enjoyed it. Now I definitely think there are better seafood restaurants, better places to get oysters and other shellfish here in New York City, but there is a certain appeal to the Grand Central Oyster Bar that isn't found in many other restaurants. It's simply such a beautiful dining room. It is stunning. It feels like I'm dining in a completely different era. Eating at the Grand Central Oyster Bar is an experience that transcends the food. The place just feels like pure New York City. In summation, I loved my food today, especially the oysters and pan roast, but the overall experience was awesome. I can't wait to return to the Grand Central Oyster Bar.